I was not expecting a double tap out today and I was especially wasn't expecting one of those two people to tap out to be Mark. You know, I think everyone had him as one of the front runners. It seemed like he was doing good on food, it seemed like he had a good shelter, even though we ended last week with him lighting his shelter on fire. And he seemed to be in good spirits and wow, did that change quickly today. You know, he has that shelter fire at uh, he handles it great, saves, his, saves the majority of his shelter, only has to replace a small amount, quickly gets everything fixed, and I'm thinking, all right, Mark is good to go, he's back on track, uh, let's continue on. And then all of a sudden, the episode kind of really changed demeanor. We were jumping between Joe and Mark and Kylan, and it seemed like they were starting to have those moments where they were really missing home and really starting to question why they were out there and if the best decision for them was to tap out. And I was a little surprised by that because we haven't really seen many of those moments this season and all of a sudden, we, you know, they've been out there a long time. That is 44 days alone in pretty terrible conditions and of course people are going to get lonely but it just kind of seemed like it hit all three of these individuals all at the same time and you know mark suddenly went from oh yeah he's gonna he's gonna give roland a run for his money to uh oh this guy this guy's going home and sure enough we end the episode with mark hitting the button and tapping out um, it is actually turns out it was a good thing Mark tapped out because he was in brutal physical condition. He actually had a parasite that uh, usually t if he not, goes untreated, you get about four to six weeks before it starts totally shutting down your body. And his organs uh, particularly were in extremely poor condition. They even said that he, he basically, at the end, he had a, the heart of an 87-year-old man who had just suffered a massive heart attack. So, you know, as much as I wanted to see Mark stay out there, it turns out it was the right decision. He made the correct decision for his health and his family. And as much as I would have liked to see him go on further, uh, when you kind of get those little bit of extra details, you realize, yeah, it wasn't that, uh, it, was the, it was the right thing to do. Like it was not somebody quitting. It was somebody whose body was telling them, something's wrong here, you, got, you need help. And you know, it's good to hear that he got that help and he's doing fine now um, and uh, everything is good in life. All right, let's move on to Joe. Joe, you can't be in the Arctic for 44 days and have no shelter. It's like, we were like day 43, he started to hear some wolves and he was like, oh, maybe I should have a shelter. He, and then he starts actually working on the shelter and, you know, hours later taps out. It was a, a real head scratcher for me. I, I can't imagine that he would have lasted very long into the cold weather with that shelter he'd made. Like, even though he did look like he was bringing in some food or at least brought in a decent amount of food this episode. Uh, this, was, this was not someone who was a contender this season. I don't think any of us watching thought he was a contender. And really out of the, out of the six people who were left at the start of the episode, he was the one who intrigued me the least, that I was least invested in their story. And when it came time to, for Joe to be on screen, I was often just found myself uh, all right, let's move this along. Let's get back to the people that I'm interested in. Same with this review. Let's get back to those people that we're interested in. First episode of the season with no Roland. I'm guessing that doesn't happen again now, now that we're down to four people. But, uh, you know, a lot of people think Roland is going to win this season. He seems like he's in the best position right now. He's got the best shelter. He's got the most food. 
and seems like he's doing everything right. So I was surprised that we are this deep into the season and we got an episode with no Roland. Uh, Amos, you had that run in with the Fox and I think, I think he handled it quite well. You know, you can't kill the Fox no matter how many times Bill Randall says in the comments that you should just kill all the predators. No, that is a protected species. The fox is protected and you know the the people who are on this show need to res respect the rules of the land uh, and where and where they're at wherever it is in the world so I, I thought he handled it well you know you need to you need to scare that fox off you can't have that that fox sniffing around your shelter while you're sleeping that fox will figure out a way to get your food and steal your food and there's nothing you can do about it. So I thought that was a good move. You know, he takes that blunt arrow, shoots the fox, scares it away, and hopefully that fox doesn't come back, but we have seen in the preview, he does get some other canine visitors. So maybe the fox isn't that big of an issue when later on in the season, he's gonna be surrounded by wolves. Uh, Callie, how about Callie having a little Halloween party. Um, the thing I found really interesting about that is I thought we were already into November and to basically find out that tonight's episode ends on October 31st. That gives us a really clear picture of what lies ahead weather wise. You can go and look up the uh, weather in Yellowknife Northwest Territories online in November 2019 to see what our contestants are going to be faced with. It basically looks like uh, in about three days we're going to hit around that minus 10 Celsius mark and the temperature mainly stays uh, that temperature or colder for most of the rest of the season. Uh, it'll be a little while yet before we hit into the minus 20 Celsius range and I think that is the point where uh, temperature wise the contestants are really going to get tested uh, Kylan uh, she had a very interesting episode tonight you know goes walks that trap line sees two absolutely obliterated rabbit carcasses and some lynx tracks and is basically thinking you know I could I could not get another rabbit ever again out here because this predator uh, is going to be hunting them down and, and taking down those rabbits as they're sitting there on the snare. But we saw later on, she did bag, I believe three rabbits right at the end of the episode and that should help put her back on track um, for the le next little while on the show. Uh, also just wanna point out, I think it's kind of cool that we're down to the final four and with including Callie and Kylan. They have been uh, doing awesome this, this season. And I personally think that Callie is the person who is going to push Roland the furthest. And it will be interesting to see just how far our final four can take this. All right, that is gonna wrap up my recap for the night. As always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.